Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. I'm in the Phoenix area and we're going on a little bit of an adventure today and I'm super excited and you, you might notice here this is not my van. We actually came along with someone. Hang on. Mr. Van Man. Hi uh, there. Where are we at today? Uh, I think it's called Tallison House. Okay. The Frank Lloyd Wright House and he did actually live here for a period of time here in Arizona. Very cool. So since I'm in the area, we're gonna be doing some exploring and we've already gone on one adventure, but this is the next one. So I'm super excited to share this with you guys. So come on and uh, let's go on this audio tour. After securing our reservation and checking in, we went inside to the gift shop area. That is where you pick up your audio tour. The audio tour is available on your phone through an app. However, if you do not have a phone with you or headphones, they do have them on site. They'll give you a small MP3 player that will dial into the tour and take you stop by stop. Now, this is a little bit of a different kind of tour because it's a very quiet space. They want to show how the intention of Frank Lloyd Wright to appreciate the land, the landscape, and also the ambiance is present even to this day. The tour itself has 16 stops, and this takes you over the sprawling campus. You can come inside and outside of the buildings and see the various points of architecture, and also find out a little bit more about the intention behind the architecture. This is a very interesting and unique tour, unlike any that I have been on previously. The first stop explains the location itself and why it was selected and also why Frank Lloyd Wright had this western campus in the first place. By the time that you moved to stop two there was a brief shade respite along with several of the beautiful cacti that have been featured in these magical gardens. It is absolutely spectacular to see and as you listen to the audio it really draws you into the story of why Frank Lloyd Wright is the person that we know today even still. By the time we stop off at stop three, we see a unique petroglyph. This petroglyph symbolizes the people who were native to the lands and how Frank Lloyd Wright symbolically commemorated their presence there through various aspects of his architecture and also mimicked the nature around him through the shapes and styles that almost shadowed the mountains. Moving into stop four, you enter into Frank Lloyd Wright's office and this is a very intentional space that really brings you in to the feel of the location. Frank Lloyd Wright used intentional spaces like these to change the way that you would perceive the space. So when you enter, it's very narrow, and then it opens up into this huge room with this massive table. This table was used so that he could show blueprints to people from above and have equal perspective from different angles. The fireplaces around the campus are gorgeous stone fireplaces, which you could imagine would have really brought a presence of of warmth and joy to each and every room. And here you can see not only this, but also envision how it would have played out in a typical setting. I really enjoyed the fact that they encourage you to think back while visualizing the space and let your imagination run wild. I think it's really great how that they give you an individual experience and how throughout each and every portion of each room, you're able to envision this in quite Quiet. The quiet nature of this tour really sets it apart from others. As you move around the outer portions of the campus, you are able to see the home really come to life. You can see the large drafting room from a distance, the pool, which is actually a triangle shape to mimic the size and shape of the mountains behind, the unique lines, the beautiful grasses, the stairs that just seem to go into unique, beautiful spaces, the doors which are slightly odd, and these very interesting pieces of art that you'll find throughout the entirety of the campus. These were actually picked up in California and brought here and are used as a transition. So anytime that you see one of these, this is an intentional transition from one space to the next. And as you're listening to the tour, it tells you that you will find each and every one of these and know that you are about to enter into something that is very intentional 
intentional and very different. There is also one red block that they highlight along this tour that actually has Frank Lloyd Wright's signature still on it. And that's very important because this is something that he would use in all of his various pieces of architecture to really cement his legacy into the piece. We saw a bunny. Oh my goodness. This is a quiet place, but we saw a bunny. At one point, whenever this campus was officially developed, it wasn't just a home. It was a place for people to gather, to learn, to apprentice, and also to build. And so the campus has gone through a variety of different looks and appearances. In the Grand Room, there used to not be windows in the entirety of the space. And that was because they would let the free-flowing air come through and create yet another aspect of Frank Lloyd Wright's vision, the synchronicity with nature. You can hear water flowing around you in various places from aquifers that they had found just beneath the surface. The stone is the natural stone from the area. The beautiful colors that you see throughout really are vibrant and pop against this. And there was a lot of influence with Asian art. And you see that throughout the main room that we're going through right here. There is a very large wall canvas that is textured and three-dimensional and there are accent pieces that go along with this. It's very interesting to see how this space was planned for a large group and how the seating reflects that. You can only imagine that at some point there were some intellectual conversations, some comedic conversations, and some things that might have been the things that would create these large grand scale plans of the future that Wright is known for. As we move outdoors, we move toward the Kiva area. The Kiva area is very different than any other place within the home. The Kiva is dark, almost like a dungeon, and it has been set up so that they could do meetings here, or they could also have a projector that would project down and show various movies or features. They could also go over interviews and things like that here. This was also used as storage because of its enclosure space, because Frank Lloyd Wright and his family only spent a portion of their time at this location. This was their winter getaway. Their other location in a far snowy place was not comfortable during those cold winter months. So they would come here to enjoy the seasonal weather that was so wonderful and scenic. They could enjoy and soak in all of those views, get the work done, and really enjoy the ambiance of Arizona. Arizona has a unique feel to it, and Frank Lloyd Wright drew a lot of inspiration from this. You can find many of his structures that he has created in the Phoenix area. They're quite impressive, and definitely one of these days we'll have to go on that tour. 
Just past the Kiva, you enter into the breezeway, which aligns with the dining room and drafting studio. The dining room you can just kind of peek into through the windows, and you can see that it's an expansive space that was designed to have a lot of people in there. In fact, the dining room was used by the students and the apprentices, as well as Frank Lloyd Wright and his family. You can see that it is connected to the drafting studio, and there is a through door from one to the next, so people could come in and work in the drafting studio space. Space. This was known as the epicenter of the campus. This is where the large designs were created and even though there would be multiple people in the room, it was typically quiet because there was a lot going on. The views here are a little bit different. You can see everything, but it's in a softened light. This was also an intentional choice. They used a different kind of roofing so that it would in fact diffuse the light to make it perfect for working and for that calming feeling that you need whenever you are working. It was really awesome to see this and the scale of just how many people could be here working at the same time right alongside Frank Lloyd Wright. Leaving the drafting studio, we moved into the final stop, which was the cabaret. The cabaret was actually developed after the Kiva because they had outgrown the Kiva space. They needed something that was larger, so they placed this building kind of toward the front of the property. This particular room is fascinating. It looks like a movie theater when you go in, but like a really nice boutique-y kind of movie theater. There's a screen at the front, and then there's this long hallway that kind of goes down by the presentation space. There are a variety of chairs, the light is soft and moody, and it's wonderful to go in, and it just gives you this really refreshed feeling, and at the same time, this calmness. I really appreciate how they integrated the little pops of color and the unique wall sconces because these are also signature to Frank Lloyd Wright and his style. It's very interesting to be able to see these things up close in such a unique way. Typically when you're viewing a Frank Lloyd Wright building you have to view it from afar. However with this one you get to be intimate and close and it is a beautiful and wonderful experience. The overall audio tour is approximately an hour and you'll want to wear some comfortable shoes. Surfaces are a little bit uneven, you're going in and out of buildings and also you'll want to be able to take your time and bring a camera to take lots of photos. It's absolutely gorgeous, I definitely recommend. You do have to have a reservation so get your reservations before you go. Okay guys, we made it back to the van. That was so cool to see. It's very interesting to see how this was actually a campus and there were two versions of this location. So the home base, which was in Wisconsin, and then here, this was the Western version. And people would come here to apprentice and learn the different skills and crafts of shapes and how things could flow together. And it's interesting because every single piece of this location matters in some way, shape or form. He used a lot of things to like really draw you into a room to make you experience that room. So there were like compressions and compressions are where you squeeze into a tighter space and then the room opens up. He also did some things that were super cool in the way of how he integrated the natural landscape into this property. So it was super fun. I have really enjoyed today. If you've enjoyed coming along with me, remember we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. And today was definitely that. Till next time guys, bye.